Well, hello. Come on and take a deep breath. I welcome you into my Sela Sunday. I tell you, all day long, I have been in what I am calling a contemplative prayer time, and I pray that this message will get you to realize that we all need to be in a contemplative place so that we can make sure that we don't try to be doing anything as much as it is as we're trying to be with our daddy. And that's what I did today. I, I tell you, it's been something. So anyway, I want to jump right into our scripture that I'm looking at here, coming from Proverbs chapter 8, verses 32 to 36. And it says, Now therefore hearken, or hearken, unto me, O ye children, for blessed are they that keep my ways. Hear instruction, and be wise, and refuse it not. Blessed is a man that heareth me, watching daily at my gates, waiting at the post of my doors. But whoso findeth me, findeth life, and shall obtain favor of the Lord. But he that sinneth against me wrongeth his own soul. All they that hate me love death. You know, as I begin to meditate today, you know, on just this topic that I'm giving you now to say lie about, I begin to think about how important it is that we look at this scripture. And what Abba is trying to show us is David was speaking in here, He's trying to show us, especially in verse 34, that this word has a lot of, this particular text has a lot of different messages for us to pay attention to. But there's three particular principles I think is very key when I'm talking about having a contemplative prayer time. You know, talking about old school, where we just sitting down being quiet and don't be talking. We're listening and saying and we're watching and saying and they're saying and we're waiting, right? That's what it's telling us. And so in this Selah just for today, I want you to think about all that talking you've been doing when you get in the presence of Daddy. You know, you got to be quiet. You know, I've been saying that over and over again in messages that I've been sending. If you think about the intensity of what quietness can bring, you would be quiet. Remember, in order for us to be able to hear, we got to shut our mouths. You can't speak and listen at the same time. you got to really be quiet and shut those gates, you know, and, and make sure that God is really, really talking to you and not the thing that you're being challenged with. Just vow to be silent. I was telling those that are standing out in our um, chaplaincy class, I say suffer to be silent. You know, as a preacher, we don't want to be quiet. You know, be quiet, suffer to be quiet, vow to be quiet during this contemplative prayer time. And that's what I did. I vowed not to talk to nobody. Mm-hmm. I vowed to have what I call all the time when people don't hear from me, even my children. It's my no talk day. I don't go stop. Yeah. It's my no talk day where I can't talk to nobody. I gotta be real, real quiet in a specific zone in my life. Not just my prayer time, but this contemplative type of prayer that I'm talking about right now. This is where I have really, really went to another zone where now I've gotten so empty. I'm not talking about doing no mindfulness type of exercise. But I'm talking about where I've become very empty. Empty so Daddy God could come in and start moving things around and bringing things to my forefront of my mind to think about what I need to be doing. And not no condemnation, but what I need to be considering. You know, to think about where I need to get some rejuvenation, some recovery from some hell hits or whatever. You know, but I need to look at, you know, that, that's why it's called contemplation. You know, this is the time that we gaze intentionally. We gaze intentionally on really who we are, who we've been pretending to be. You know, contemplate means to gaze at. It means to intently look at. It means to think about greatly. Yes. It means to think about what are you expecting. Mm -hmm. What are you trying to be or trying to pretend that you are? You know, who do you think you are without daddy? Uh Uh-huh. I know I'm talking to somebody. And it also means to meditate, to muse into. And when you're talking about you're going to muse into something, that means you're going to consider deeply. That means you're going to make sure that you sit patiently and you're going to listen to what daddy's really, really showing you about you. Mm -hmm. So you can really get to see who your authentic self really is. So then now you don't shift it to meditation. I know I'm talking to somebody. Now you're trying to work on a plan uh huh, that you're going to intend that that is showing you what you need to get straight. This is why you got to have this say lot of day. I know I did all day long here. I've been sitting back and saying to myself, whatever, I'm not their Lord. I know that I know that they know when they don't hear from me, she's either shut in or she's praying, she's fasting, she's doing something. For such a time as this that we're in, 
we better sit down and not only meditate, we better contemplate and we better make sure we fast. I said they watch, listen, and pray. Like I said a few minutes ago out of that scripture, those three, three, three key things that I brought out just now. But we got a plan, you know. We got a plan on how that is showing us how we're going to take what he's telling us to do in the war zone. You know, so we got to be in a position. So this word reflect, if you think about it, as we reflect on ourselves and, and, and reflect on those things that we know daddy wants to straighten that tree out where that fruit got some rotten fruit on it. You know, he wants to reflect on these things that we need to look back on, these things that we know that we're looking in the mirror at and we won't straighten out. I know I'm talking to somebody. Lord, help me today. So anyway, we got to make sure that we pay attention to those things that many times we want to overlook. We need to make sure that we don't get confused with what looks pretty in the natural versus what's in the inner man. Yes, God. And so that's that authentic self, that true self. So the contemplative prayer is letting go of everything that you thought you could control on your own, everything you thought you could do on your own, those bills, those things you're trying to see how you can take from Peter to pay Paul. I know I'm talking to somebody. I just sit back and say, hmm, well, i got to wait on you for that, so I thank you anyway. This is where we go into a Thanksgiving mode. I know I'm talking to somebody. That means you're letting go and letting God for real now. Mm-hmm. You're letting go of your life. You're letting go of those things you think you could do on your own. You know, you're not trying to do anything in this false self, yeah, that you thought that you could be the little God about. It's a kind of communion. That's what it is, this, this, this type of contemplative prayer. It's a communion. It's an intimacy with Daddy like none other. That means nothing else matters. It, it almost consumes you because you're like, wait a minute. I've got to get up and do something. Wait a minute. You know, I've been in this all day long. I, I, I'm about to, I feel like I'm just, I don't know. I, I, like I don't even, I'm not here. I, I, am I really, really in, in this real natural flesh? I know I'm talking to somebody. And so when you start think about when you start think about the contemplative type of prayer zone, now you have shifted yourself into a prophetic practice. You hear me? This is what you want to be in, a prophetic practice. Because now daddy is getting you to see that now you're practicing contemplative prayer that you're looking inward. Ah, so there. You're looking inward. That's right. You're looking at the thing both in the natural and in the spirit realm. That means things become very sensitive to you now. You begin to see everything. You hear everything. You know, sometimes you can even sit back and feel like you can feel somebody done cussed you, somebody done slapped you, somebody done spit on you. Even when you walk into a place, into another room, you may be doing something else. You go, oh, all of a sudden you feel something in your belly hit you. Because why? Because you are in this contemplated prayer zone. Mm-hmm. And that is that you be able to have a revelation, an understanding, a discernment of the Spirit to know what to pray for, what to look into the fruit of the Spirit about, what you need to be long-suffering about, what you haven't forgiven about. I know I'm talking to somebody I don't want to break. Yeah, it's just such good feeling to be in this place. Oh, God. So I'm going to get off here. I want to say this. This kind of communion you don't want to miss. You got to spice out at least an hour or two, at least three, you know, to shut the phones down. Don't talk to nobody. You know, don't answer no phone. You got to get somewhere. I'm telling you, where you can be in that place where nobody can talk to you, nobody can even see you. Uh Uh-huh. You got to get in that place. And so this place of being is where God is totally with you. Everything about you, everything you're thinking, all your thoughts, all your pains, all your groans, all your mumbling, all your complaining, all the things that you're concerned about, you're laid it at his feet. Oh, my God. Every time I think about it today, I just laid it at his feet and said, thy will be done. Ah, My God, my God, I know I'm talking to somebody. Thy will be done because I want your kingdom to come in my life. I believe you are not the devil. I know I'm talking to somebody. So I'm listening. Yes, I am. I'm hearkening, yes. I am listening, I'm watching at the post. Yes, God. I want to hear, I want to know. And I know that whatever it is that's tangible that I do not have, you see what the scripture said here in 35, but whoso findeth me, that's that wisdom. Yes, it findeth life, and you shall obtain favor of the Lord. And that's exactly what's been happening to me. I've been having so much favor in things that finances have not been in my hand tangibly to do. I know I'm talking to somebody. So consecrate yourself. Get in a place that you can really, really begin to fast, do some liquid fast, whatever you need to do. But make sure you get in contemplation, that you can be totally empty in our daddy's presence. Now, I want to close with this, say, I thought. I want you to make sure you remember what I told you. 
This contemplative thought is a, t- a prayer. It's not one that you're going to be doing no uh, religious exercises. That means I'm just sitting here. I want to prophetically practice on hearing Daddy's voice. I want to prophetically practice on getting into the seer realm. I want to prophetically practice to see where my visions have gotten dry, you know, where my dreams are drifting off to. And who are those who are trying to be dream killers in my life? I know I'm talking to somebody. They both shot this. Shot my big light. This day has been so special for me. And even though I know that this day is Memorial Day for those who have lost their lives, and some people are grieving even now, and we need to make sure that you give your kudos and your honor, and I certainly do, for those who have served for me and my family, I just honor you today for those that listen to this message who may have been to the service and who may be grieving. I'm praying and standing the gap for you as well. That time is also not just looking into you, but it's also a time that we need to make sure that we have become very outer aware and inner aware. And so here's the Selah. We need to make sure we just say thank you. If you don't say anything else to Daddy, but just say thank you. You need to tell those who have been in, in the armed services or those who may be going through, we need to let them know that we're thanking God on their behalf that he's going to answer them. In spite of all there's been, even with this young baby that's missing, Malia, I still say thank you, Daddy, that you're working it out that you're going to make sure the exposure comes, you're going to make sure that the healing comes, and that we're going to make sure that we know what to do to help this family in our own family first. Amen. So we'll know what to do community-wide. So here's your say life. Remember this. If we are to spiritually and physically function effectively, we must learn first to look two directions, to preserve our constant contact with Abba and to spiritually see our authentic self. And how are we going to do that, Dr. Murphy? We're going to become more spiritually outer and inner aware, right? And how are we doing that? We're taking our time to make sure that we empty ourselves, empty ourselves in this con- contemplative type of prayer zone. Remember, our inner world, too, always is going to be part of our reality. Stay alive.